Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Amen. Amen. Now, we encountered a crucial junction in Mark's Gospel last Sunday with the first foretelling of Jesus' death and resurrection, the mystery of the cross. In that same passage, we had the opportunity to try to grasp the need to see and live in the world from God's point of view, not our own limited human perspective. We will give Peter credit for speaking on behalf of all the disciples in recognizing and identifying Jesus as the Messiah. And this tension between our human frailty and the divine world that Jesus so wants us to see in order to live our lives is with us again today with this second foreshadowing, foretelling of Jesus' death and resurrection. And again, the disciples can't grasp it. They're, they're dumbstruck. They didn't, not only did they not understand, but they were afraid to ask Jesus what he was telling them, what he was sharing with them. And that lack of a reaction is somewhat harrowing to not even respond to the story that Jesus shares with them about what is to happen. This is not stated explicitly in the Gospel passage, but at this time, Jesus' public ministry in and around Galilee, the Sea of Galilee, and that whole vicinity of teaching and healing and lifting up the poor and feeding the hungry has drawn to a close. And that mystery of the cross will be where this Gospel of Mark takes us in the coming weeks. The journey from Galilee to Jerusalem with this second foretelling of Jesus' death and resurrection. And we then, again, with a very, very much tension in the air, get this little child entering into the picture. And look how those followers of Jesus set up Jesus to share the story and the role and the place of this little child with those disciples. Jesus asked them, what in the world were you arguing about on our way to the house? And again, they were silent because we learn that they'd been arguing among themselves about who was the greatest among them. And that just opens the door really wide for Jesus to bring that little child right into the midst of that crowd in that house, Jesus and his disciples, to share with them a story about this kingdom that the Messiah is bringing into the world, has brought into the world, and what a significantly changed world it can be if the disciples and all of us can only hear what Jesus is really telling us. The disciples arguing about who's the greatest among them is a powerful example of the times that they lived in, and indeed there were different social uh, order rules and standards in that first century time in Palestine. And they were arguing their position in that hierarchy, their rank and status. 
Who's the greatest? Who's got the highest social elevation in the social order of the time? And this is exactly what Jesus is going to absolutely turn upside down and put everybody into a whole new kingdom with that little child. Because children, like servants and slaves in first century Palestine, were non-persons. They had not one iota of recognition by any other people in society to personhood. They were, they were non-persons. And so by placing this child right before everyone and saying that if they indeed, if a person indeed wants to follow Jesus, we hear that wonderful reference to being last and being a servant of all. And welcoming that child in order to welcome God in Christ into our lives. That would have been an, an absolutely unbelievable thing to say to that group of disciples who were just moments before debating which one of them got to uh, polish the apple and be higher in the social order than, than the others or the other people around them. Now Jesus tells it like it is, that the world that he brings to one and all, then and now, is one where we have to be able to hear the word of God in Christ to know that it is this sort of love of all of God's people, young, old, all different backgrounds, all different sorts and conditions, is the world that we live in. We can't go about arguing about where we stand in our community. We have to be open and loving to one another, regardless of where we're coming from, and regardless of where those strangers in particular are coming from, and look at one another as little children. I'm thankful to say that I believe in our society today, we do take our little children on as small persons, that we don't view them most of the time as non-people to be shunted off in the corners. We really honor them um, like we need to honor everyone. And that is this wonderful mission that Christ gives us in this passage is to listen, not be tied up in talking only among ourselves, but listening for the divine voice that springs out of Scripture for us. Every time we hear it, we have that opportunity to take it in and live different lives, lives that will build up God's kingdom. It's within each and every one of us. And so as we've shifted direction and are heading towards Jerusalem and the mystery of the cross, where Christ died once and for all and rose again, let us listen for that divine word so that we can truly take up our crosses and follow Jesus in all that we do. Amen. Amen.